In this video, we're going to create this part. And you can see I already created it once, but I'm going to show you how to create that from scratch. And we're going to do it from the sketch. So this is a sketch I created myself, but I created it because I saw somebody else had done a similar thing in SolidWorks. And somebody asked me if we could create that in FreeCAD and how would we do it? So I don't think it's identical. I certainly didn't look at the dimensions or anything because that it was all in imperial measurements. But I created something in millimeters because I prefer to work in millimeters. If you like inches and uh, fractions, you can carry on doing that. But that's not something I like to do. So for me, even though I live in the United States, I do everything in millimeters, which can be a problem sometimes if I want to get screws or something like that they're not widely available here in millimeters so you have to go back to english or uh um, you go back to uh inches to to get screws and and other things so i'm kind of hybrid in that uh, situation but to be fair um i just i prefer to work in millimeters it makes more sense to me to have everything be in multiples of 10 and that's that's why i do it so so you choose you can do what you like but i i prefer to do that so we're going to do how do we create this part and basically what we're going to do is we're going to create it using some of the techniques that we've already learned i'm going to keep it simple i'm going to take my time doing it so that you can see how to do it and then you'll be able to take on something like this to model it and to make it work for yourself um, this is not a part that I need to use but it is a part uh, that I think shows how to do some more complex modeling so without further ado let's move on so the first thing I'm going to do I'll leave this model open but I'm going to start a new model so I will start a new one and I'm going to save that one as I'm just going to call it complex model because it goes with my video. And I always make my free CAD files available to my Patreon. Um, so all my patrons get these free CAD files uploaded so that they can access the actual file that I create during the video. So first thing we're going to need to do, we need a part and we need a body and then we're going to create a sketch. So I'm going to work on the XY plane. And the first part is the base. And the base is literally a rectangle. And as you know, with a rectangle, we always take these points. And we're going to keep it centered around the origin because that just makes the modeling easier. So we're going to put some symmetry there. And then we're going to create a couple of dimensions. And I'm looking at the sketch here. That dimension is 80. And this dimension is 50. I'm just reading those from the sketch. So we're going to close that. And then we're going to make a pad. And it's 10 mil thick on my sketch. So we're going to leave that as 10 mil. And we'll say OK. Just want to take a few seconds to say thank you to our patrons. That's Moo Cow, James Blackwell, Carrie Sillan Mankey, Mark Morse, and Daniel Dudley. These guys have the videos at least a week in advance. They get access to the free CAD files, and I really appreciate their support. So thanks. So that's the first part. And of course, that's the base. Very simple. If we wanted to put chamfers or radii or anything on there, I'd leave all that till last. We're not going to do any of that ahead of time. So for now, um, we're going to we're going to work with this piece and we're going to build up from here. So we're going to do another sketch. We're going to do it on the X Y plane, and this time we're going to do the holes in the corner. Now remember, when you do this, your model is going to switch off. So you want to go back to your part, hit the space bar. And the model will switch back on. I hit this icon up here to get back into the middle of my, my picture. I'm going to open up my model tree so you can see that I'm actually in the sketch. And I'm also going to use this icon 
Remember, this makes it show you a sectional view so you can now see where you're drawing. And then all we're going to do is we're going to put a hole up in this corner because that's where the hole is. So I'm going to just draw a hole. And then I'm going to dimension it. It's a diameter. So as always, I like to dimension diameters. This defaults to radii. I personally think it's a good idea if you're doing a diameter to dimension it as a diameter. And those di diameters are, or those holes are eight millimeters on my sketch. And then we want to position this in the corner. And I have it on the sketch. It's 10 millimeters in from this edge and 10 millimeters in from this edge. So I'm going to dimension it slightly differently to that. So I'm going to dimension it. Remember, if we click that point and we put a dimension in, it will automatically assume that we're going to this origin. So I'm going to dimension from there. I know this side is 80. So that means from here to here is 40. And I want it to be 10 back. So I want that to be 30 millimeters. Hopefully that makes sense to you. So I wanted it to be 10 from this edge. I know that this is 80 long. I know this is the center point because I made it symmetrical around there. So I know from here to here is 30. That will leave here to here as 10. Now I can do exactly the same thing. I'm going to click that point and I'm going to do this dimension. And I know that this one is 50. So that means from here to here is 25. So that means I want this to be 15 millimeters. And that puts my hole 10 in from this side, 10 in from this side and an eight millimeter diameter. And my hole is now fully constrained and ready to pocket. So I'm going to close that and I'm going to create a pocket. Now in doing so, I want it to go through the whole thing. And again, you don't see anything because it's going in the wrong direction. So I'm just going to say reversed. And now there's my hole. So I'm going to say OK to that. And that's the hole that I wanted. Now, I want four holes and they have to be equally spaced. So I'm going to select that guy and I'm going to use my multi transform. And I'm going to say in this multi transform, you can see I already picked the pocket and I'm going to right click to add a mirrored transformation. And this is by default is using the vertical sketch axis. So I have two of those holes. Now right click in here again, do another mirrored transformation. And this time I want to do it in the horizontal sketch axis. And now I have the four holes that are in that base. So I can say, okay, and say, okay. And that is my base all done. Now I want to create the central pillar. So to do that, I'm going to do another sketch also on the XY plane. I'm going to say OK. And again, my model has disappeared. So I actually want to switch it back on because I want to be able to see roughly where I'm uh, drawing this thing. And then I am going to use this same icon so I can see a sectional view. And this is just another rectangle. So I'm just going to create another rectangle in the middle. And we're going to do exactly the same thing for constraints. So we're going to put that symmetrically in the middle like that and then I have a dimension for this side which from my drawing was 30 millimeters and I'm just going to move that dimension out because I find it a bit confusing if they're laying all over the place and then I'm going to dimension this guy and that one I know needs to be 20 and I'm going to move that down so we can see that too so there are my dimensions, fully constrained. Once again, we're keeping it simple. We're building this up slowly. And we're going to say um, close to our sketch. Now remember, just in case anybody's confused, when you can see the model view, you're in a tab view here. So this is the model view. If I click the tasks, it shows me my current task, which is this sketch. So I'm just going to close the sketch. Now I've closed that sketch. I can create a pad from that sketch. I'm going to do that. There's my pad. Now my pad is 10 millimeters already 
but it's 10 millimeters. It drew on this face here, remember? This is where the, the plane is, the XY plane. And so it drew from there up 10 millimeters. But I want it to be 80 millimeters tall. So I need to add in this 10 millimeters, and then my dimension is 80 from this face. So this is going to be 90 millimeters tall. And there is my center post. So with that being done, I am going to pop that in the middle so you can see it. I am ready to do my angle now. So I can create an angle across the top here. So I'm going to do that. Um, and we could have equally, we could have drawn this as uh, on this plane, and we could have drawn it with the angle, and then we could have um, made it that way. I mean, that, you can choose how you approach these models. Um, to be honest, if it was a complex shape, I would have done it that way. But in reality, um, with this being so simple, I decided I would just go ahead and cut the top off it. So we're going to do a sketch in that YZ plane and say, OK, we're going to turn our model back on again. This is good practice to make sure you know how to do all that. Hit this icon. So I'm now back in the center. And one thing I need to do in this sketch is I need to bring this geometry into the sketch because I can't select this at the moment. But if I click here, this icon here, which actually creates an edge linked to an external geometry, and then I select that edge, it will put that edge in my drawing for me. And now if I take a polyline, I can start at that point there, over here, uh, go back up to here, and end up on that line there. So now I have a triangle that is going to shave off the top of that post for me. So let's close that. And you'll be able to see that my triangle is sitting right in the middle of that post. And I'm basically just going to pocket that and go either side. Now I'm going to open that sketch again because I want to constrain it. So let me do that quickly. I'm going to take that guy and that guy and give it the angle that I want. It's supposed to be 35 degrees. So I'm going to create that. And then I'm going to create uh, a dimension for this side. And it doesn't matter what that is, that dimension. I'm just going to leave it be because uh, all I'm looking to do is shave the top off. So I'm going to say close. Now it's fully constrained. I'm going to say um, pocket and I'm going to do this pocket um, through all and I'm going to do it symmetric to the plane and there it's shaved off the top part. So as I said you could have done a sketch that was this shape here and just created that on the XZ plane and then uh, created a pad symmetrically which would be a little bit more efficient than what I just did. But to be honest, it's not that big of a difference. So let's get everything squared away here. I'm going to go pop it in the middle. Now you can see I have my sides here. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create these um, pieces that fit on the side here. So I think um, what I'm going to do, I'll do it all in one go here, I think. So what we're going to do is we create a sketch. We're going to create it on the YZ plane. And we're going to say OK to that. And we're going to turn our model back on. So I want to be able to see it. And go sectional view. And then all it is is a circle that fits on this line. And it has a dimension. The outside dimension is 10 millimeters that that's perfect and just pull that guy out a bit so I can see it I'll zoom in I want another circle on the inside and I want that guy to be five millimeters again from the sketch so 
that is my dimensions. And then that needs to be, uh, where is it dimension there? It's going to be 50 up from the bottom. That's where we're going to put it. So from here to here is going to be 50. So I can select that point, do my vertical dimension, and make that 50. Say OK. And now that guy is right where we want it to be. So now what I want to do is I'm going to close that fully constrained sketch and I'm going to create a pad. And I'm going to create that pad symmetric to the plane. I'm going to turn it around so you can see it. Now, symmetric to the plane, if I do 10 millimeters symmetric to the plane, that's five either side. We know that is 20 thick. So if I go 20 millimeters thick, you just see it popping out here. And my dimension for the amount that it pops out is four. So I want that to be 28 because it's going to be four a side. So 28. And now it's sticking out for each side. So I'll say OK to that. And now we have that piece in there. Now, if I wanted that hole to go the whole way through, I would have just done the outside shape and then done the inside shape separately and made that a pocket. In this case, because I added this after I had this body, if you look, because it's a pad, this part is filled into this level here. But that's actually what I have on the drawing. So that's what I wanted to do. But if you wanted it to be a through hole, what you would have done is just create this lug. Then you would create a drawing for this um, hole and then just make that a pocket. So you'd be able to pocket it all the way through if you wanted to. OK, the next piece we're going to do is there's a plate on the top here. And so if we have a quick look at our sketch, you can see the plate is on the top and it's 35 degree angle and it has some dimensions to it and we're going to we're going to take care of that now by using a Dayton plane. So Dayton planes are a very useful tool and what we want to do is we want to um, put that Dayton plane we're going to start with it on our origin of our body. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the origin over here and I'm going to turn that origin on so I can see it. Then I'm going to create a Dayton plane and it didn't love that so um, it's selecting now where we're going to stick it so i'm going to stick it to that guy so my date and plane is now actually connected to this um xy plane okay so my date and plane you can see it sitting there's that brown thing in the bottom there that's my date and plane so if i maybe if i move that a little bit you'll be able to see yeah you can see it better there so there's my date and plane that is my date and plane sitting there. And what we want to do is we want to move that date and plane. We want to make it go on top up here and sit at 35 degree angle. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to rotate it. And to rotate it, you rotate it around an axis. We know this is the X axis. So we're going to rotate it and we're going to rotate it 35 degrees. You can keep clicking or you can just type that in there if you want to I just kept clicking so there's my 35 degrees then I want to offset it in the Z direction now that offset is probably the most complex part of this um, model and that is we have to calculate the dimension from here to here we want to calculate this triangle so that we know what that point is. Well, we don't need to actually calculate it um, ourselves. We can actually make that offset, that Z direction offset. We can make it that distance. So we know the distance from here to here is 80. And from the bottom here to here is 90. OK. And so if we know that's 90. We know this is a 35 degree angle. And so we want to calculate what that height there is. So the height is going to be equal to. And I'm going to select the Z. And somebody pointed out that if you're in this part here and you want to go with the formula editor, you can just hit the equals. And the equals 
Well, that shame plus over here. I actually hit the equals. I didn't hit the shift. So plus and equals are on the same key. So the equals then gives me the formula editor. So I know I want to offset it 90 minus the tan of 35 degrees times half the, the distance of this. We know this is 30 from our drawing. So that's going to be 15. So that times that. And say, OK. Now, our offset should be exactly on top of, it should be exactly on top of this, exactly in the spot. And so I'm going to say OK to that. And now we want to create a drawing that's actually on this XY plane or on this uh, datum plane. So we're going to do a sketch. We're going to select the datum plane. We'll say OK. And we're going to center that sketch. And we're going to turn on our part again. Center that sketch one more time. And now we want to create the basic pad so it's very similar to what we just did at the bottom i'm actually going to turn off all those uh the origin of the bodies just to make it a little clearer for you to see what i'm doing so this guy is going to go here somewhere and we're going to do exactly the same thing so we're going to select those two points that center point and we're going to make that symmetrical and then we're going to give this a dimension which from my drawing that dimension is 50 And we're going to, I'm just going to move that, I'm gonna move that out so we can see it. And I'm going to select that and give that a dimension. And that one is 40. And that's all good. And we're going to say close the sketch. And then we're going to pad. And that one is only four millimeters thick. Now, I want to let you know, if you calculate that distance and you type in the distance rounded, you can end up with a little gap between this datum plane and this face, and then your model won't work. So by putting that, that calculation actually into the model, you're exactly in the right place. It doesn't do the rounding, but if you put in what you calculate, it'll round it to two digits and it'll actually be slightly ahead of there and your model won't work. So if you're having a problem with your model not working, it could be because you're not entering that formula. So you want to enter that formula. Now, we have our top plate and now what we're going to do is put our holes in. So it's going to be exactly the same thing that we did at the bottom. So I'm going to say Create a sketch, select the date and plane, say OK. Turn back on my model, center everything. And it's the exact same techniques. So I'm going to put the hole roughly where I want it. I need to hit that guy so I can see it. I'm going to dimension it. In this case, the holes are three millimeters. And we'll zoom in there. And the exact same thing. So they're actually six millimeters in from the edge. And I know those edges are from the center out is going to be 20 and 25. So, so let's just take that point and we're going to give that a dimension. So if that is 25 and we want it to be six, so 25 minus six is going to be 19. And we're going to do the same for this guy. And that should be 20 minus 6. So it should be 14. And that puts it exactly in the place where we want it. And, and again, it's fully constrained. So we're going to close that. And we're going to create a pocket. And we're going to say through all. 
And again, it's in the wrong direction. So we're going to reverse it and say, OK. And there we have our hole, our first hole. And we're going to do the exact same transform. So we're going to select this guy and we're going to transform it. And we're going to right click to mirror. And then we're going to right click to mirror again. And this time we're going to say it this way. And now we have all four holes. And we'll say OK. And I'm going to turn off the date and plane because that is now um, in my way. Oh, no, I need it for one more hole. And I have one more hole down the middle, which is a 12 millimeter diameter hole. Let me turn it back on. So it's just a matter of touching the space bar. And now let me just say one thing. I could use the datum plane, create the hole, and it will create the hole perpendicular to that datum plane. It'll come right out the back here. Is that what we want? On my sketch, you can't tell, but I actually prefer that the hole go perpendicular to the XY plane. So I'll show you both just, just so you can see. So I'm going to create a sketch. I'm going to go back and turn on my model. I'm going to center it. And it's literally just a, a circle. But I'm going to do that so you can see where I'm going. I'm going to attach to that point. Pull that open. All I need to do is give it a diameter. It's 12 millimeters. And close that sketch. I'll show you exactly what I meant. So now if I do a pocket, and I'm going to say through all, and symmetric to plane. Now you see I have the hole. It's on that angle, so it's it's as if we drilled it perpendicular to this plane, but it'll pop out the back because we're coming in on the Dayton plane, so we're coming in perpendicular to that plane. I don't think that's what I really want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cancel that, and I'm going to delete that last sketch. Now I'm going to turn off the Dayton plane. I'm going to create one more sketch and I'm going to create that sketch. Actually, let me close that. It created, I already had the date and plane selected, so it created it on the date and plane. I didn't mean that. So we're going to do it again. Make sure we don't have anything selected. We're going to create a sketch on the XY plane, say OK. And this time I don't need to turn the model on because I just want this hole to be right here. And we're going to do the same thing again. We'll just dimension it to 12 millimeters. And we'll close that. And we'll say pocket. And we'll say through all. And I'll just turn it so we can see it. Just get back in the middle. And right now you can see the pocket is there, but it's not coming out the top. That's because it's not reversed. So there we go. We have the hole all the way through and we can say OK. So that's basically the model. And now what we want to do is just finish up. We'll put some chamfers on, whatever. Uh, one thing I do want to show you where we modeled that and you have this outline. If you want to get rid of that, if you go in, if you select the pocket, so you selected the whole model. If you look here, it says refine. If you look here, it says refine, and you can change this refine to true, and then click away, and it'll hide that away. So that cleans up that face, and then I'm going to bring this back into the middle. And just a couple of things, you know, if you wanted, if you wanted to add some chamfers, you can add a little chamfer here, a little chamfer there. Maybe chamfers here, here, just to make it look the part. So I'll round off or chamfer off the edges. Let's probably do the same thing up here. And just say OK. And now we have a piece that looks um, pretty cool in my opinion. Uh, done pretty quickly. 
showed you how to actually make that part and get to the end of it. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you enjoy seeing how to make a more complex model and you enjoyed seeing the techniques that we've already learned being put to some good use and understanding the, the ways in which we can uh, modify and, and use those techniques to create whatever models you want to create. So if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. And of course, consider joining our Patreon. All my patrons get the CAD file that goes with the video and they get an early release of the video. So they'll have had this video uh, at least a week before you see it. So thanks again and I'll see you in the next one.